Welcome to our DaVinci Resolve 16 webinar. My name is Steve Spiegel, and this is a presentation uh, provided by Future Media Concept with the help from our friend from uh, Dell Computers. And uh, this is what the Dell advertisement would look like from our friends from Dell Computers. Now more than ever, you need technology you can rely on. I'm a Dell Technologies advisor. And if you're a small business, we're with you. We are with you. We want to help. So we'll be right here at home, answering your calls, providing support, and standing by you every step of the way. Bye-bye. And here's some additional and here's some additional information about Dell. Uh, if you take a class with Future Media Concept, uh, they give you a discount. And if you want to see one more time that uh, presentation, the Dell promo, it is on Vimeo 4180463529. All right, so let's get back to the venture result. I have set up a, a title and uh, a existing project that was uh, prepared for us. So this is probably the easiest way to demonstrate and talk about how the DaVinci uh, can be used for your future editing tools. You know that the DaVinci Resolve is still a free product. You can download it for free from the Blackmagic website. The current version is 16.2.1 and I'm doing this demonstration on May 13th. So if you want to start a project, you always know that there are a couple of ways of going about it. One would be opening up the application, and the application is a DaVinci Resolve. I'm using a Macintosh, and I have a version that is a Studio 16, which is a $300 version with a dongle that has some tools that are really, really cool, uh, specifically with the face recognition and the face analysis. Anyways, it opens up, and anytime you have a DaVinci Resolve um, the application open up, it asks you what projects you want to work on. If you see an untitled project, that by definition is an empty project. And if you right click in it and the project settings are opening up, you can decide what is the aspect ratio, the frame rate, and the raster size that you are going to be using. If we are in these United States, we generally use 19, 20, 1080 full raster high definition. And we're using a 2997 drop frame because what's for broadcast is. Uh, because in broadcast, that is what is being used. With that being said, <clears throat> when you save that, next time you double click the untitled project, it will open up with those uh, specifics. Now, on the bottom of the environment, you will notice that there are buttons that identify media, cut, edit, fusion, and color, fairlight, and deliver workspaces. Um, the hierarchy, presumes that you will connect media first then you're going to do some either fast pace editing which is very similar to iMovie or um, more advanced editing then if you need to add some animation you would add the animation and do the animation portion of it but you and I will deal with pretty much the media editing color and deliver so this short demonstration this short webinar will cover pretty much all those um, the junction points um, and that will be starting with the media so the media presumes that you have nothing in it and uh, you need to bring it in you can right click inside the environment where the no clips in media pool are showing up if you import media command i shortcut on a macintosh control i would be on the windows and the browser tells you where you can go and where you can find stuff uh, this is one of the ways that you can really uh, identify where your material is and if you know where your stuff is. In this case, I am looking at my uh, stuff that is on DaVinci and I'm looking for the 16 version. And in 16, I believe I have lessons that are uh, organized in some way that I can actually see some footage and the media files would be you know, uh, quick time or any kind of uh, MOVs. So in this case, if I select the Wyoming quick time movies, the dialog box may tell me that I am wrong frame rate 
compatibility, which means that the frame rate of the footage that is what I'm bringing in compared to the project different. So you need to make a decision. I will make sure that the project choice dictates everybody else. Everybody else meaning whatever the footage I get, uh, what the frame rate is going to be. So I will not change the project therefore comes in brings in all the clips all the clips come in and when they are in you can actually increase the size uh, make sure that they are all playing you can um, scrub around them and if this is done which means that the handshake was done you can save this as a either save project which is command s or shift command s save project that what happens is when you do that save um, scenario it goes into a database and if you are not sure where the database is and you are a person who's moving from computer to computer and you have a hard drive that goes with you uh, the option you can exercise is activate the export project and the export project you can decide that it will go on a specific drive like in this case i have two external drives that i can put on and i will call it my webinar demo and it is going to be specifically going on to a external drive. It will still be in a database, but it will right now be uh, findable or uh, sitting, living on that external drive. Where is it? Let's just double check that. The 250, double click on it, and you notice that it is my web demo. There we go. That's where it went. And I know that I saved it at a specific time. Therefore, when I have it, I can always activate it, I can always input it, I can always start with it. When the material is in, the next step is obviously using the editing. Now, if you use the cut tool, the cut tool is a very simple one where you can actually grab elements and put in a timeline and you put it together and it's now like an iMovie. Um, you can add elements to it and depending on how you drag it in, overwrite, the splicing, or any of that stuff, you can actually add a very interesting story. And depending on what tools you use, in this case would be the insert or the append, there are shortcuts. So if I click on a clip and say, hey, I want to append this, where does it go? It goes to the end of it, appends it. If I go on next shot and appending it. In the cut edit environment, you have two timelines. The top timeline is the actual timeline always zoomed in. So you can see that I have one, two, three, four shots. So depending on where I am, the playhead will park on it. And you notice that the bottom pictures are scrolling. And this for people who are really um, using the picture as a, a guide is a very cool way of explaining where you are physically. And this editing technique is really much faster than anything that you have out in the market, primarily because you can exactly know that I'm on the first shot and four shots. You don't need to zoom in, zoom out. You're already zoomed in in this blue area. The bottom line is that if you have enough RAM, you can make this work because there's a lot of pictures moving around. So if you're that kind of editor, meaning that you want to fast pace and see the pictures all the time, this is a good way to manipulate things. I will move on to the edit. And in edit, it looks a little bit different. And this is where I said I need to start to zoom in and move the playhead differently. If you do the shift Z and shift Z, uh, you can actually see uh, the entire timeline. You can use a keyboard shortcut that I like a lot. And this is just a quick side note on that one. In and out in an area that is using the command option K keyboard in and out I and O. When I say command option K, I'm always referring to the Macintosh. It would be uh, control alt K on the windows. Anyways, I entered in and out and I would like to take that material out. So uh, Da Vinci has a very interesting way of assigning buttons to certain uh, functions. Uh, namely, the backspace button that we are familiar with on the keyboard also acts as a delete button. But physically and visually, it is a larger button than the delete button that is between the alphabetic and numeric. So the question I'm asking myself, what's the difference between deleting with the backspace as opposed to deleting with a delete button? So here's the answer. If you're using the big delete, you are ending up with a hole, which presumes that you are using the delete as a lift delete. Command Z undo, Control Z on the windows. If you do the small delete, you're actually extracting it. So that's a really cool keyboard shortcut. So there is a distinction, there's a differentiation between the 
large delete and small delete, which is silly, but essentially the large delete, the big delete is left, the small delete is extract. With that being said, um, if you are ready to move on, we are going to bring in the project that was pre-cut for us. So um, you need to notice that uh, DaVinci does not have the option of uh, playing two um, projects at the same time. It can play multiple sequences, but cannot play two projects. So you have to leave the project that you are working on. And the way to go about it would be just go home and say, hey, bottom right hand corner, I'm going to open up another one. The one that I would like to open up is going to be uh, on the, the uh, hard drive that I uh, earlier prepared. So if I right click inside the import project, I will find it and it's going to be on the Sandis 250 and it is going to be called Webinar May 13 project. So opening it up. brings it up, it asks you, do I want to have a copy made of it? If I don't want to have a copy made of it, it just identifies where it is. So double click on it, opens it up. Project has not been saved. Uh, untitled project, I, wanna, I don't want to save the original one. So I'm just loading up the one that was preset for you. So this is where we went from, or this is where we started from. Now, um, here is what I would like to do. I would like to get rid of the title and uh, hitting the small delete, you'll notice that it extracts it, commands the undo. If I hit the big delete, and it lifts it out. Let's do some color grading because that is what essentially uh, Da Vinci is really, really famous and known for. So the first step is switch over from edit tool to color tool. You also have an option of using uh, either keyboard shortcuts. So the workspace, uh, you can actually use the keyboard shortcuts that are listed and they will be shift two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I want to use the um, color would be shift six let's try that shift six there we go we're on color keep in mind that the real estate that i'm using is very specific upper left hand corner of my system preferences identifies that my monitor is playing back at a large raster in my case 2048 pixels by 1152 which is larger than 19 20 10 80. if i have a smaller one like a 16 by 9 um, real estate wise i will lose out on some of the tools so if you are working on a laptop and not all the tools are showing up in your color please the first step you need to investigate is is your display showing you at least a 19 20 10 80 raster so go into system preferences open it up go back to the displays and do change and make it so everything fits in if it does not you need to reset it and in the workspace drop down there should be a resetting of user interface layout there we go resets it back to normal so now we are finding the familiar things that we have seen in other applications namely the color wheels the curves and the timeline to jump around the timeline you have a couple of choices one of the choices obviously is to move your playhead and your playhead parks on the elements that you are looking in the viewer you can also single click inside those elements inside those little clips and your other option would be using your up and down arrow command option k the up and down arrow to move up would be left down would be right so let's close that so if wherever you are if you use up arrow you're going to left parks always on the first frame and uh, if you go the down arrow goes farther down you may notice that in this timeline, in this um, sequence, if you are not looking at in editing, but in color workspace, there are icons uh, that are surrounded with a rainbow color. The icon I'm referring to is the square above, in this case, the shot number seven and shot number nine. So in shot number seven, I see a rainbow, suggesting that there is a color grading added to that particular clip so the question is what is the color grading that we have added onto it and uh, you will notice that if you click on the node this icon this um, the graphic uh, is known as node um, it shows me that was a primary balance done on it and this icon represents what the color grading was so a couple of ways of dealing with that uh, one option is that to take that uh, off. Uh, 
right now because that is the actual original. Turning it off will actually not do it for you. That's where I, as an editor, use always uh, two notes to start with, not a single note. So the single note is always empty. What I'm referring to is the following. If I have nothing on it and I do an option S, the next node I can make adjustment on it and then I can turn that node on and off so I can compare it with the original and what the adjustment was. So for that reason, I very rarely make adjustments to the first node because there's no comparison. Now, with that being said, Command Z undo, going back a couple of times. Okay. And when I go back, I should be going back as far as the original having some adjustment. So if you are really rushed for time and you want to make adjustments, and the prerequisite obviously would be you have uh, the same lighting conditions for a whole variety of shots before or after this particular shot, after this uh, particular or before this particular clip. So if you look at six or five, or four, you have to agree that the conditions in the kitchen probably are the same. It's the same story. So it's not like time difference, hours difference, morning, evening, it's the same shot. So why is shot number seven already bright and six, five, and four, they are not. So to copy a single adjustment or multiple adjustments, here are possible scenarios. Select the four holding down shift and make sure that you have the seven ready for you to be copied from. One more time. So if you select four, holding down shift, four, five, and six, and you would like to apply the same color that was on seven, you can right click on seven. The dialog box gives you multiple choices and the one you wanna look for is apply the grade. So you're applying the grade from the seven to six, five, four. If you look at it, the full screen, you notice that they are all bright. There we go, five, six and there we go now this is now dark so if you do command f go back to normal you will notice that seven is bright eight is dark how do you add it from seven to eight how do you copy it paste you select the destination first and then you select the source and you apply the grade and that's your fastest and easiest way if you want to clean things up in this case i'm going to clean up eight and four five six hold down shift four, five, six, hold down command, select eight. In the color dropdown, in the color dropdown environment, I will reset those nodes to the default. And you notice that the uh, rainbow color is off as well as uh, the adjustment uh, is gone. Now, let's go to the first clip because I need to explain a couple of things about how the lighting is measured in DaVinci. In order for me to know if this shot is bright or dark, uh, there are two things. One is obviously my eyes. My eyes tell me that it is a dark shot. Well, dark compared to what? So why don't we set up a reference? What's the reference? Well, the reference to me in this case has to be something mathematical, not what my eye tells me. So right-clicking inside the viewer, activating the scopes and the scopes when they come up they give you four uh, different scopes to uh, choose from the generally most frequently used scopes are going to be either the waveform and the vector scope the waveform by definition gives you a brightness darkness reading and the vector scope gives you a color blob reading so if you just want to stick to the waveform activate the waveform Click on the waveform drop down. Now you have the waveform. What does the waveform tell me? The waveform tells me that from the zero to 1024, I am pretty much in the gray area, in the center area. I have no bright areas, even though I see some sour cream or whatever that is, but that is not bright enough. So if I play the clip, you will notice that I don't go above a mid area. Now, when I say zero from zero to 1024, I am talking about a 10-bit digital equivalent where uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, and 1024 are the possible permutations. Therefore, from the darkest zero to the brightest, 1024 is the range. How does that translate to the 8-bit? You guys are probably more familiar with the 8-bit, which is using 16 and 235 as it's dark. We call it uh, safe 
dark and save bright or legal um, black and white would be also terminology used so how does the 10 bit and 8 bit compare when you're looking at numbers the upper right hand corner of the scope gives you a analysis where you can set the waveform density and the graticule of the lines more brighter turn the color off and adjust only the brightest and darkest using uh, luminance not a chrominance combination so in this scenario if i type in into the low to be 64 and into the high 940 that is multiplying four times the 16 and 235 therefore if you have that set up and you activate it you should be able to see it unless i turn it off in this case i didn't so let's turn it on and there we go so we see the brightest level marking and the darkest couple of ways of dealing with that adding another node option s one adding another node option s so two nodes are added and they're going from left to right in a horizontal um, pattern which means that whatever i have on one it uh, adjusts the two whatever i have on two adjusts the three and so on so two is going to be my balance if you want to name it you can right click on it and you can uh, node label it and call it balance not blends <laughs> balance and the balance is adjustable um, easiest and fastest with curves because curves give you an option of dragging out all the way that's it that's your maximum brightness and the minimum darkness is already reached if i want to increase some of the midtones increase the midtones this is known as an s curve so with just a couple of keystrokes i was able to make adjustments and if i want to compare it without it with it playing it the full screen i'm going to loop that clip by itself so if i go and uh, make it full screen which is command f playing it full screen if i do a command d now it's without it this is now with it one more time so if you look at things that are adjusted you will notice that the brightness is reading and if i look at things that are not adjusted as the original so we understand that the curves is a very powerful tool that makes adjustment now the interesting thing is that if i made the adjustment and i will not have that particular look applied to everybody else even though two only has one node three and so on they all have one node you can select all of the guys from two to eleven right click on one and say hey please apply the grades it will not just apply the grades but it will add to each of those additional ones that you chose a third node ready for something else in the scenario of seven it actually overrode whatever seven was so it actually changed everything over and everybody is now the same even to get rid of uh let's say from through two through uh seven hold down shift get rid of all the color adjustment you had added therefore in the color drop down reset all the grades and notes so it goes back to normal default and they are all now default do the same thing for eight hold down shift 10 and 11 make sure that they are go back, going back to the default and reset all grades and notes default now the reason why we choose this scenario is because for some reason when the producer was uh, recording let me like take a look at it big screen when the producer was recording it uh, they said fine everything is cool but can we just emphasize and lighten up the area where the actual food is which is the plate this is where your new friend comes in and that new friend is going to be called and it is called a power window the power window has numerous shapes that you can select to manipulate how does it work if you select a circular shape the circular shape is now put onto the uh, plate and if you decide that that is going to be the adjustable environment you can go back to your friend the curves which is a very easy fast way to brighten things up this is obviously silly too bright or too dark but if you just go slightly and you go back to the power window and have the softness around the window set set up the blending is going to be much more believable command f full screen without the effect with the effect it's like a light glow around it but it is so um hidden that you can actually say hey i just brightened up the food without it one more time 
and with it. So it is my, and you can actually see the spike in the uh, image where it tells you, yes, I have more brighter pixels as opposed to less. That's one way of making uh, things interesting. Now, in the scenario where you have characters, in this case, the two ladies are talking and they are discussing the food, uh, you could make adjustments that are uh, much more uh, robust. So, for example, here is my scenario. I will make sure that the ladies who are presenting the food are going to be lighter. The table is going to be darker and there will be lighter. So either I make the table darker and leave them alone or just make them brighter. Here's what I'm talking about. Selecting again a power tool again on the adjusted image already. And the power tool is going to be the power window. And in order for me to see what I selected, I will actually, well, the brightness is not a bad idea to analyze. Show me in the split what is separated. You notice that I apply it to the second node and that kind of is really defeating this whole purpose of adding, uh, adding information to individual nodes. So probably going back and applying it to the third node, which is going to be the separation node. One more time, select the shape and you notice that the shape is right now anything above. The softness is the border, softness is the border, and the positioning, you can position it any way you want it. So if I want to have somewhere between the table and them, the area brightened up, going back to the curves and brighten it up. Now this is obviously really drastic, but for demonstration purposes, it's really perfect. If I want to make sure that it is also a little bit uh, warmer, generally when you work with warmth, you deal with color. Pushing the color a little bit warms it up, but if you also counter it with a little bit less blue, that makes it nice and brown. Without it, with it, without it, with it. Now, if I turn the window off, meaning the split window, you can notice the difference between the brighter upper area, lower area is darker. Or should I say the upper area is much more... Um, kind of lit. It's almost like a very bright sun is coming in. It's, in this case, it seems to be too yellow. When I say too yellow, I presume that I understand what the waveform change to vector scope is not telling me. Yeah, it tells me I have a lots of yellow. So if you're familiar with the vector scope, again, the graticule and the vector scope density is going to be interesting. You notice that the color spacing is red, 11 o'clock, magenta, blue, cyan green and yellow and seems to be that yeah there is a lot of yellow so if i turn it off yeah it looks like it's going yellow so i don't even have to be uh, understanding yellow even if i'm colorblind i could identify that yes uh, there is more yellow in that image so if that's too much bring back the red a little bit and push the blue back there we go so now we have less of the yellow you can also use the wheel where you say the wheel has the dark area bottom left hand the gray area and the bright area so if the gray area has to be less yellow the opposite of yellow is bluish and you can see I'm moving it away cooling it off with the gain uh, the same thing goes for the dark areas and the dark areas are now being pushed away or dragged away as well as the really really dark areas so the lift is the dark gamma is the gray and the gain is the bright areas. If you want to do globally, you can actually move the entire image and it moves everybody else. So it is either warmer, yellowish, or colder. Now, the reason why that's important is because if I would like to apply this adjustment, I'm talking about the adjustment of the splitter. When I say splitter, I'm talking about the splitting between the table as well as above. So if I would like to apply it to 5, 6, and in this case, I would like to do it also to 8, hold down 8, and select 6 and 5 and apply whatever was on 7 to 5, 6, 8. Right click on it, add the grade. So now all three elements or all three sections where the women are around the kitchen uh, table, they are kind of going to be really set up properly. There we go. 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. It's consistent. Let me play it out from where from five full screen command f
Now it's only playing one clip because I'm looping on that one clip. So if I turn the loop, it will play it from where I was. In this case, it's playing from five. Hit the space bar. Five, six, there we go. Seven and eight. And you can notice that the color remains the same from five to six to seven. Okay, so I have some yellow because the light comes in, meaning that the fire shows up. So there's the fire. That's that yellow fire. With that being said, let's just finish it off. And if you want to have adjustments of other type, for example, I'm going to take off all these adjustments that I made. I can reset uh, 5, hold down Shift, 6 and 8 again. Again, go to the color, reset all the grades and nodes. Keyboard shortcut would be command and uh, up arrow. There we go. If I would like to make adjustments individually and not from global thing, I can select five. Here is a very fancy and very powerful tool. You will say hello to your new friend, the automatic balance, because I don't want to use it on a, a default node. Option S once, twice, the balance is going to be adjusted, automatic. Automatic does a decent job when you have a prerequisite. Let me explain to you what a prerequisite is. If my dark is not all the way to the bottom and my bright is not all the way to the bright, the automatic does a good job saying I will make adjustments following the guidelines. I'll push it all the way to the maximum and all the way to the minimum by automatically bottom left hand corner do that and it does not mess anything up doesn't alter anything it just says the maximum brightness and the minimum darkness is achieved in order for me to uh, remedy that and bring back the brightness to the white level and bring the darkness to the white level i'm referring to the upper brightness maximum and the lower darkness minimum i have again my friend the curves the curves i will choose a tool that in the default anchors helps me bring down just the bright areas as well as push up the dark areas where they need to be and this does not work badly because if i would do it with a bright i'm squashing things so that would be much harder so if you just want to bring the top down and bring up the bottom you can manually add a anchor and bring the brightness down a bit add an anchor to the bottom and push it up and now you made adjustments on your own and this is known in the industry as the s curve so this kind of is a way of explaining how the brightness in darkness is adjusted now you have to accept that the woman that is in the center and she is uh, dealing with the cooking her right side of the face is darker so if you want to make adjustments on that right side of the face here are again tools that you remember earlier we discussed and I demonstrated with the power tool. So let's fix that. Go into the power tool. And in this case, I'm going to add a circular uh, shape to her face. And the circular shape to her face is going to be a smaller one. I'm going to shrink it down a bit. Zooming in with your mouse roller uh, into out is really the fastest way to manipulating the environment that you work with. Shrink down the circle, make it like an elliptical shape and if you want to make it uh, you know rotate or whatever else you need to do with it but essentially i will make it such a small thing that if i grab her face and i put it on i am actually adjusting her face now the problem with me and this footage is going to be i presume that she's going to be stationary well she's not so if I know exactly where she's going to end, I can trace it backwards. Or I can just start and say, hey, at the beginning, it should be on her right side of the face. If I'm at the end, this is how it would work. Let's try that. You switch from the power window to the tracker window. The tracker window allows you to track, in this case, backwards. So if I track it backwards, yeah, it tracks it backwards. And it tracked the shape to her face. In order for me to make that adjustment as we have done it before select the shape which in this case is the power soften it up so it doesn't have sharp edges and make sure that you make adjustments now this is obviously extreme but you understand exactly what is going to be 
down so slightly adjust the brightness and if i look at it on a full screen with the brightness off and with the brightness on on the right side and because she moves it goes with her command d without it command d going back with it clearly you have to define what is acceptable in terms of the borders and how much of that brightness is going to be necessary but you see a clear clear difference between using one keep in mind that you can have multiple shapes on a node but the color will be the same throughout that whole node so with that being said i am now making sure that whatever i have done up to this point if the brightness is adjusted fine uh copy things over does the face matter yeah i can copy the face but it is just much easier for me to say hey at the beginning i have the brightness i'm not using the separation of the food but just the brightness i'm going to reset the default to fit and copy from one through two three four is going to get the same thing hold down shift two three copy apply the grade so two three four and because i did not select the shape on two i don't have to worry about the shape nor the three nor the four but the brightness is adjusted so when you get done with all the adjustment and you are able to see what fits in this boundary of the brightness and darkness let's just do 10 11 while we're here hold down shift copy it from one um, apply the grade fine if the tracking of the uh, meal meaning the plate if I go on to the meal does the meal work yeah kind of works still so if I play it through yeah okay she puts it in without the brightness with the brightness so if you would have a scenario where only the food needs to be separated here's your best case watch it please in this scenario the food is in the center you have utensils and other elements here so if you want to have only that area showing meaning the food you can separate it one more time fast way selecting it right click add a node that is an outside node and the outside node is going to get the gaussian blur there we go so now if you look at it you will notice that everything is out of focus except the uh, food you can also say i'm focusing on the food nothing else and that's how it looks like perfect so now when we're done we can uh, use a quick tool to deliver things the distribution tools that are available are going to be displayed in the upper left hand corner ProRes H264 depending on who are you sending it to if you're not sure usually custom is a good start to work with I will say end of webinar and I will identify where it's gonna go I will identify it to go onto a desktop on the physical desktop and on physical desktop I will call it end of webinar hit save so now when I send it out, I'm sending out the compression QuickTime H264, unless I decide some different one. I'm gonna stick with the Apple ProRes 422 high quality, and I'm gonna send it out as a 19, 20, 10, 80, 29, 97 drop frame. Uh, adding it to the render queue is just a single click. And when you're ready, you can hit the render, it renders out, it gives you the progress. It shows you exactly the frames that are being rendered. And when it's done, look for it on the desktop. Double click, open it up. And here's my story. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for uh, I'm so excited choosing to Future share Media with Concept. You, One of my favorites. And it's that's a prawn pretty and much it, what I had. So this is spaghettini. This, uh, it's like webinar. a thinnest style spaghetti. Um, and it cooks quite quickly. And it's nice and fine. And sometimes it's called angel hair pasta. So butterfly. It's a nice, a nice, nice.